And here's how the championship looks at this point. With Harvey leading by 14 points, Jones still within reach, and he can definitely make it happen still with five races to go. Ed Jones definitely can. He's qualified really, really strong, and he's been quick so far, but he's yet to put it all together. Jack Harvey and Spencer Pickett looking increasingly, increasingly strong this season. And then beyond that, yes, the others don't have a chance for the championship, but boy, finishing fifth sounds a lot better than ninth and tenth, and that's all very realistic. And these guys are trying to find sponsorship for next season. Yeah, exactly, and I'm looking at Felix Zorales here, who's on a bit of a swing at the moment, and he can very easily make it into that top five there, maybe even challenge R.C. Enerson towards the end of the season here. Zorales had a run to remember in Milwaukee last week, started sixth, got all the way to the front for his first Indy Lights win. The third of three ovals this season. They are aligned on pit road. Let's go downstairs to get things started. Engines are fired. And 11 drivers set to go green here in a matter of moments. At Iowa Speedway, just under a mile in length, it's a short track that runs like a super speedway, and the beginning of this race is going to be oh so critical. On board with R.C. Enerson, who's going to start in the sixth position. He ran up front all race long in Milwaukee last week before coming in second. We'll get it started in just a moment. Stay with us from Iowa Speedway, Indy Lights, presented by Cooper Tires, getting set to go on NBCSN. Welcome back to the Iowa Speedway with Anders Krohn and Katie Hark, and I'm Kevin Lee. We are set for 100 laps of racing with Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires. This is how they will start the Carlin Racing teammates up front on the oval in row number two. The championship leader, Jack Harvey, and his teammate, Ethan Ringel. Right behind them, Scott Anderson and R.C. Ederson, two more Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports drivers. Yukos Racing hasn't been exceptionally quick here this weekend. Kyle Kaiser is one of their drivers. Juan Pedrajita from Bellardi in row number four. Spencer Piggott, second in the championship, has not had a car to his liking so far. He starts all the way back in row five, and then Shelby Blackstock will bring up the field. Time to find out the keys of this race in Anders Insider. Why, wow, it's just such a fast and short oval. This is 162 miles an hour. And watch out for that turn two bump. It's incredibly, incredibly tough. Finally, could this be the time for some of the rookies to break through and win some races? We are green, they're up to speed. The two blue cars, the Carlin cars, with the early jump in front of everyone and they're three wide back in the pack. Look at that move for R.C. Enerson around the outside of turn one and turn two. Huge momentum for him after a tough qualifying. Wow, what a job. Scott Anderson in the black and blue car, 77. Look at him down on the low side. There's Harvey going side by side. And this is such a smart decision for R.C. Enerson here. Look at this. He's going to go around the outside, which gives him clean air. No turbulent air on his wings whatsoever. We saw a lot of that at Milwaukee Mile. He's learned his lesson, and he is so quick right now. Anderson into third position, and he will go to work now on the car. Let's Max Chilton hung on to the lead, leading his first lap here on an oval. Ed Jones, who won the first three races of the season and has had more challenging times since then in second, and Anderson has got to run. Look at this. He's going to try and get that clean air again around the outside of turn three and four. He's going to have to get back in the draft right now, try and see if he can do anything down into turn one. Again, 14 degrees of banking here, a lot more than we saw at Milwaukee Mile. Big compression right there as you see the cars just humping and bumping away. How aggressive do you have to be early in the tire life? Oh, you absolutely have to be aggressive on the opening laps, but after that I think it's so important that you back it down because those tires have to last for 100 laps. Again, no pit stops here in Indy Lights like in the Verizon IndyCar Series. So these guys really have to manage their tires as we see Spencer Piggott now on a move. Piggott down below. This is a battle for eighth position, working on Pedrahita, and he'll get it. And we're not used to seeing Piggott this far back. Look at this, Pedrahita gonna go for it, but then get some dirty air, and look at this, this gonna enable his teammate, Felix Zorales, to capitalize. Zorales in the four car on the inside, the two red and white teammates coming off that Milwaukee win, where he was fantastic. We didn't think he could pass at Milwaukee, and he went from sixth to first, and it wasn't through attrition. For more on last week's winner, let's check in with Katie Harkin. Kevin, it's been a very rough weekend for last week's winner, Felix Sorales. 
I spoke to him in practice and he said the car's just off. They can't figure it out here at Iowa Speedway. Then right before the race, they realized they had a leak in the fuel cell. They fixed it back in the paddock and brought it out to the grid. When Felix, Felix climbed in the car, he saw liquid in his seat. He was extremely worried about what that liquid was. His team confirmed it's just water in his seat, but Felix still a little bit concerned about what that liquid may have been in his seat. Evan. Right now, R.C. Ederson is our biggest mover, starting in sixth position up to third, and he's been challenging for second. Max Chilton has led from the drop of the green flag. And right now, I think it's so important for these guys to file into a bit of a rhythm here. Okay, here we are on board with R.C. Ederson at the initial start. So he goes around the outside four wide here as we go into turn one, and he keeps it around the outside. Kyle Kaiser as well with a good move on the inside, but he just keeps that momentum. When you go around the outside, you can you get so much momentum, and you keep the RPM and the engine spooled up. As you see, he does the same exact thing to Jack Harvey here, just keeps the engine spooled up and allows him to come off the corner super strong, and as you can see, he gets the position here. R.C. Ederson continues to impress. Just 18 years old from Florida. Skipped the middle step of the Mazda road to Indy. Didn't race in Pro Mazda. Went straight from USF 2000. And he has been pleasantly surprised by what he's been able to do so far this season. Still, I'm sure he wants to have last week back and would like to have a win. Yeah, I mean, he's just really gone from strength to strength, Gavin. So he's just building momentum in his Indy Lights campaign. And I've talked to his dad. I've talked to him. They're fully set on doing two or maybe even three years in Indy Lights. Sure. So he doesn't have any pressure at the moment, and that's beautiful as a driver when you don't have that pressure to perform. But he's just going out there and doing his very best, and you know what? He is doing a fine, fine job at the moment. Up front, this has been an impressive run by the two Carlin drivers. It's a new team to America, new to this series. They, right out of the gate, were dominant wondered if they might run away with the season after Jones won the first three races and Chilton was strong too. Then things started to even out a little bit and the ovals came on the scene. Well, this is a, frankly a shocker that they're this strong here on an oval. And now they've struck back. They dominated qualifying, but now the matter is, are they able to save the tires here? We're on lap 14 and 100, still a long, long way to go. So these guys have to be smart. But the one joker element that Carlin have with them, they have Jeff Fickling, a very, very well-renowned engineer who's done a bunch of stuff in Indy Lights with Schmidt-Peters Motorsports. He was with Velarde Auto Racing last year with Gabby Chavez. So they have that joker element, and he's been very, very strong, putting very, very strong cars on track, on this track before. You know, and I mentioned that it's surprising they're up here, and it's probably too strong because when you think of a team like Carlin, even if they're new to oval racing, we should have known that they were going to figure it out. The question was how soon, but you knew they were eventually going to figure it out. Maybe it's just a little sooner than we thought. This is just the third oval race of the season, and it's not like any of the others are the same. All three are different. Yeah, they're all vastly different, all these ovals. But again, it just shows to how diverse these drivers have to be. Milwaukee Mile was a super, super flat oval. This is massively banked. It's like a D. You never stop turning here. The strain on US driver is just immense. And what we're seeing right here from Max Chilton is nothing short of impressive. A new team to the series with two brand new drivers to the series, now dominating at Iowa Speedway, like you said, in America's heartland. It's just amazing. He has stretched his lead on his teammate to over a second, and Jones running in second is a second and a half in front of R.C. Enerson. Still much more to come, though. Stay with us from the Iowa Speedway. Just like that, we're almost a fifth of the way through this 100 lap event here at the Iowa Speedway. Lap 19, Max Chilton has been in front since we started, along with Anders Krohn and Katie Hargan. I'm Kevin Lee. Thanks for joining us for Indy Lights, presented by Cooper Tires on NBCSN. We're at the short, high banked oval, the Iowa Speedway, and Max Chilton, who has spent the last two years in Formula One, getting used to ovals in America. Yeah, what he's doing right now is nothing short of amazing. And I'm just looking at the car's behavior over that big bump, as you see. He just went over that turn two bump right there. But the car is taking it so nice. It's so compliant. Now he's going to roll into turn three, and the car is just so well behaved. Both him and Ed Jones right now are just on a Sunday drive. I mean, they are pulling away from the field. Chilton by over a second. Jones by two seconds on R.C. Ederson. Jack Harvey. The championship leader is fourth, then Ethan Ringel, Kyle Kaiser, Scott Anderson, Spencer Pickett still back in eighth position, Juan Pedrahita, Felix Sorales, and Shelby Blackstock. There's Ringel in the green and black car, running in fifth position. 
with Kaiser right behind him. Kaiser felt better about his car than his teammate Spencer Pickett did when I talked with him about an hour ago. Yeah, Spencer Pickett's had some gremlins here. They tested here privately a couple of times only about a month back, and Spencer struggled a little bit there as well, so not quite sure what's going on with him, and this is not good for his championship. But just looking at the two guys here in the picture, Ethan Ringel had an amazing qualifier earlier on. He's fell, fallen a little bit back right now, but he still has shown some great speed this weekend, and certainly a lot higher than he was in Milwaukee. And Ringle certainly burst onto the scene at Indianapolis when he won the pole and finished second. And he's someone that comes from a road course background. That was the first oval race he had ever done. And he almost won the thing. And he told me that, you know, if we would have uh, been able to finish under green, that race finish under yellow, he thought he would have had something. I, I absolutely think so. He was so strong. He was always able to challenge Jack Harvey, even on the outside of certain corners at the IMS Oval, which uh, which takes some, uh, some courage. But uh, right now, as we can see, Kyle Kaiser is a little bit quicker, but he's struggling to get close enough to Ethan Ringel. Ethan is driving a really, really smart line here, just giving a little bit of turbulent air to Kyle Kaiser in the middle of those corners, and Kyle falls back just a little bit. So what does that feel like for Kaiser in the white and blue car when he catches up on Ringel? What makes it so challenging for a driver from a handling perspective? It's a horrible feeling, and you saw it just there exiting turn four. What happens is when all the air gets taken off your wings, it essentially feels like your whole car is being lifted off the ground. When you're driving around by yourself, you have a very, very heavy steering wheel. But as soon as you get within five to ten car lengths of the car ahead of you, the whole car feels lighter and you just skate up to the edge of the track. So around a short, fast place like this, that feels really, really scary. There's Spencer Piggott in the sole red car as the Mazda Scholarship winner winning the Pro Mazda Championship last year. He came in 14 points back, so as they run, in eighth position for him right now, he would lose even more. To his benefit, though, at least Jack Harvey is not running away with the race. Harvey is only in fourth place. Yeah, exactly, but let's go back to what we talked about. So far this year, Jack Harvey's been the model of consistency. He's running in fourth place right now, but that's enough to gain him an additional advantage in the championship. So Jack Harvey, again, is just putting himself in the right place at the right time, and it's working out very well for him this year. Keeping an eye on that battle for fifth position. Ringle in front of that, Kaiser right behind him. Nothing has changed up front with Chilton by over his second. And then Jones two seconds in front of Enerson running one, two, three. And what we've seen in the last few laps is the race becoming a little bit stagnant. We're on lap 31 right now of 100. I think around lap 50 or 60, we're gonna see a lot more. But let's hear uh, with Katie what she's got. Andrews, I'm here with Trevor Carlin, who owns Carlin Racing. Trevor, why did you decide to bring a team over to the United States? Well, I mean, we've done a lot of racing in uh, Europe, and it all gone well, and I, I love Indy cars. I, one day I want to do the Indy 500, so I thought we'd better, better come and start somewhere, so here we are. You've done a very good start with Ed Jones, currently in third in points, and you've got the top two runners right now. Did you ever imagine that you would come over to the U.S. and be able to compete for a championship in your first season? No, not in the slightest, especially on the ovals. The ovals are so difficult and so specialist. And we got, we're full of respect for the other teams and drivers. So uh, this is an amazing moment, really. What have you learned most in your first season over here? Um, you've got to have a lot of patience, especially on the setup and the driving on the ovals. So um, it's very difficult and very nerve-wracking. And Max Chilton still out front with a dominant lead, Kevin. Katie, it's been great to have that team in Indy Lights. Not only did they bring a certain pedigree and some stature to the series, but I think it ups everyone else's game too. It, it absolutely does, but I'm just going back to the interview there with Trevor Carlin, and he's far too modest and yeah. humble for what he's really achieved. These guys have basically dominated the junior open wheel leagues in Europe for a number of years. In GP2, the European equivalent of Indy Lights. GP3, the equivalent to Pro Mazda. In Formula Red, they've been in so many different categories, and they've won races and championships in every single one of them. So. To me, it's no surprise whatsoever, but I do think it's a great thing for the series to have an influx of those types of teams. And the next question will be, when do they make the jump up to IndyCar? Yukos Racing, as we see Kyle Kaiser going below Ethan Ringel here. That is for fifth position, so Kaiser, speaking of Yukos, is going to get that spot. Ricardo Yukos has said, we want to get to IndyCar, we're going to be patient, probably not next year. Will Cartland make the jump as soon as next year? Well, we don't quite know, but it would be awesome to see how they would just fight it out with the American teams. But look at this now. Shelby Blackstock, I believe, coming up to get lapped here by Kyle Kaiser. So now it's important for Kaiser to keep up that momentum. 
he'd probably be best off just going a little bit to the high side here in turn one. Nope, Shelby Blackstock's going to let off the throttle there and let him go. That's very nicely done there for Shelby Blackstock. But I don't quite know about Carlin, to tell you the truth, but it would be fantastic to see them in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Well, Max Chilton leading this race is noteworthy because, as we've mentioned, he doesn't have the oval background. He's not finished better than third this season, but unfortunately notable for a very different and tragic reason. He was teammates at Marussia with Jules Bianchi, who on Saturday lost his nearly nine-month battle. He's been in a coma after a horrific crash at the Japanese Grand Prix last year. Bianchi and Chilton were friends, teammates. It's been a devastating couple of days for Max Chilton, and he's trying to win this one for his friend and teammates. At the high-flying Iowa Speedway in the heartland of America, it's Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires in the Iowa 100. With Katie Hargan and Andrews Crone, I'm Kevin Lee. Max Chilton has led from the jump. He won his first pole. He was able to race his teammate and beat him to turn number one, and Chilton has led Ed Jones for the entirety of the race. R.C. Ederson started sixth. He's running in third position, but the front three have checked out just a little bit. And there's Spencer Pig in a battle for eighth. And Juan Pedrajita is trying to get that position on the low side from the championship contender. Look at this. Now Juan's just going to drive it deep into turn one here to get position on Spencer. Is he going to be able to do it over that turn two bump? He is able to do it, but they're still going to be side by side. So now yet again, Juan's going to drive it in so deep into turn three here to make that move stick and now he has position. Now he can move Spencer a little bit up to the outside but he's not gonna do it. Wow, these guys are going at it. That is tough to race side by side here nearly halfway through this tire stint. Look at this now, Spencer is doing a great job holding on around the outside there and it just shows that this racing track really has a lot of different lanes, lanes you can pick from. Now going through turn three again, Spencer gets a great run off turn four there, which is the only reason enabling him to stay up front right now. Piggott does not want to give this up. These are points in the championship. Yeah, exactly. These are very important points. He does not want to lose any more ground to Jack Harvey. But the other thing is, if Juan gets by Spencer Piggott right now in that maroon Mazda there in the Soul Red Mazda, Felix Zorales is going to be right on his tail as well. Yeah. So he does not want that double whammy there. Pedrahita coming off his first podium of the season at Milwaukee last year. Well, his teammate Sorales got the first win, and it looks like Pedrahita's just about got him cleared. Not quite, though. It's getting closer and closer, but Spencer keeps getting the drive off the corners because he is using a slightly longer wow. distance. Look at that, chopping down, giving dirty air to Juan Pedrahita. That is textbook. That is something Will Power in the Verizon IndyCar Series would do. Let's look at this again and see if we see any wiggle. Oh, that is a solid <laughs> direction for Spencer Piggott. Wow. And, but he kept his foot in it. And the car has not been the way you'd hope it would be today. So he's just bringing everything he can out of it, trying to salvage as many points as he can. And that was a very, very tough move he made there on Juan, just closing the door, giving all that turbulent air to him, which made Juan lose all sorts of momentum. So now Juan's got to start over again. He's got to start building that momentum from scratch, but Spencer is certainly not an easy guy to pass. And it's certainly not been from a lack of trying for the Yukos team. They've been throwing everything at it. They've had a decent amount of track time with a test day coming into this weekend, but he's never really felt comfortable this weekend. Yeah, it's strange, and Iowa Speedway is another one of those tracks that requires so much confidence and momentum on your side, and if you don't have the confidence, rolling into these corners at 170 miles an hour is, is near impossible. Speaking of points, there is the championship leader as they run 20 up. As we see the two Carlins going at it, that's Jones in the 11 car on the outside, battling for the lead. And he got it. He got it around the outside of turn one. And I think that that lap traffic of Felix Rales had something to do with it. Now Chilton's going to try to the outside to get some clean air. So what Ed Jones needs to do right now is he needs to go to the high side here in the middle of turn one and two to get some clean air on his wings. Not going to do it. Wow, this battle is shaping up. So you wonder what the lapped car or soon to be lapped car had to do with it or the first time that Chilton ran with anybody in front of him, did that upset the balance of the car? He'd been all by his lonesome all race. Absolutely. One thing is leading one of these races. Another one is being in the middle of a pack with all sorts of disturbed air. And it's basically you can't decide your own line. And just look at the run there that Ed Jones got off a of turn four there. And he just drives around the outside of Chilton. Chilton couldn't do anything about it. 
So Ed Jones, who won the first three races of this season, both races at St. Pete, and then from fourth to first at Long Beach, he is back in front. He's had some struggles since then, including 11th and 10th place finishes, eighth at Milwaukee last week, the other old of this season uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the Freedom 100. He finished in just the 10th position. Well, now he has a chance to win on the oval and maybe change the fortunes for himself in the championship. Yeah, but have a look at this. These guys can't get past Felix Zorales. They're about to lap up, but obviously he does not want to let them go. In case of a full course caution, he wants to get towards the back of that pack again so he can fight his way towards the front. So he's not letting these guys go, and that's just allowing R.C. Enerson to come into the picture. Look at how much he's closing right now. And for Sorales, some might say, well, he needs to give way for the leaders, but he's still on the lead lap. But there's a caution, and he has had a decent car at times, and we know he was fast last week on the Oval Hills. He's still thinking maybe there's a chance as we ride on board with R.C. Enerson. He's in third, and these two guys battling up front has allowed him to close back in. He was three and a half seconds behind. Now he's just more than a second back. R.C. Anderson is loving this right now. He's been patient so far, so let's see how his car is once he gets into that traffic. But Max Chilton does not want to let this go. Oh, is he going to try it on his teammate? No, he is not. And look at that. He just slides wide. Is that Felix Sorales? Sorales went way wide, and he wasn't just getting out of the way. He's got an issue. So Sorales gets out of the way and doesn't impact anything, but isn't able to continue on. So he ducks onto pit lane. Last weekend's winner at Milwaukee pulls off and is going to fall back and not have an opportunity to get a good result here today. Meanwhile, Ed Jones does hang on to the lead. Chilton challenged him. Stay with us, plenty more to come from Iowa Speedway, Indy Lights on NBCSN. Back at the Iowa Speedway, lap 63 of 100 for Indy Lights, presented by Cooper Tires on NBCSN with Anders Krohn, Katie Hargett, and Kevin Lee. Max Chilt, the full sitter, led the early stages of the race before his teammate Ed Jones got around him. Jones is in front now by a little less than a half a second, and they're dealing with lap traffic. The red car is Juan Pedrajita, who they're trying to get around, and that's going to allow Chilton to catch up, and Chilton is going to take a peek to the inside. Chilton will dive down low. The red car in front is about to go a lap down. The two teammates nearly touch. Chilton is back in front and retakes the lead. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Juan Piedrahita just chopped up Ed Jones and lost him. all his momentum there. Max Chilton now back in lead. He needs to get by Juan Piedrahita right now in that red car. There he is, up the inside. He needs to stay on the throttle down there he is now Ed Jones needs to follow to have a chance oh Ed Jones almost in the barrier there what is going on and we are going to have a yellow you see in the split screen Ethan Wrinkle has come to a stop while the two leaders deal with lap traffic Chilton gets away a little bit so that yellow is going to help Ed Jones because Chilton had pulled out by more than a second or so so Ringle is stopped. We saw Sorales a moment ago go into the pits. He did come back out on track, but he is some four laps down. Ethan Ringle, though, has come to a stop. Uh, Kevin, if we thought Milwaukee Mile was an awesome race last week, this is an astonishing race. We've seen so many passes, repasses side by side. I can't believe it. And now we're going to get to see a restart. Max Chilton led the first 51 laps before his teammate Ed Jones got around him. Chilton takes the lead back again on lap 65. Let's talk more about Sorales and what happened and check in with Katie. Kevin, the weekend for last week's winner just keeps getting worse. He had a cut right front tire. That's why we saw him come in just a few laps ago. Then when he went back out over the radio, he, the team said, hey, come in the next lap. We need to change the rest of those tires too. He said, hey, guys, I also think there's something wrong with the suspension. So while they're changing those other three tires, they're going to check the suspension. Kevin. So Sorales, unless there's a lot of attrition, is going to finish way back. And he was able to make up some points back to fifth in the championship. Not only did he get that win, but he also got 10 points back. He had been DQ'd in the second race at Toronto when he finished third and didn't score any points. Now they've decided he can score last place points, which moved him from eighth to fifth in the championship. Yeah, his season couldn't be any more upside down. He's been... He won a race, he's been on the podium, he's been taken away from the podium. It's been one of those seasons where you just can't put together any sort of consistency and this is just proof of the pudding right here. So they try to work for Sorales, but he's no longer a story in this race. He'll be just trying to stay out of the way and see if anybody else has issues. 
and he can pick up a spot because he's only one lap behind Ringle. So that's uh, one tangible benefit that he has for going back out on the track. So this shouldn't take too long. They'll check for debris and they'll sweep the track, which is important because you want that high line to be clean to see if we can have a, a pass here on this restart. Exactly, and I, I think what we're gonna see here on the restart is the most aggressive person is gonna be R.C. Enerson. He made that high line stick. His only disadvantage is that he's got Juan Pedrojita between him and the two leaders of Max Chilton and Ed Jones. As we see, actually, Pedro Hida is going to move up here, so he's going to go to the back of the pack. So that is going to allow RC Inners the chance to make that high line move again around these two Carlin drivers. Max Chilton has finished no better than third in his debut season in America for Carlin Racing after spending the last two years in Formula One. Look at Ethan Ringle being pushed away. Chilton also had the challenge of mid-season being away for a little while. He missed the Toronto weekend. He missed the Milwaukee test because he was racing at Le Mans. I mean, talk about a guy that's seen a bunch of racetracks and a bunch of race cars. He raced in Formula One, and then he's also a factory driver on the Nissan LMP1 program in the World Endurance Championship, and now also in Delight. So he races a little bit of everything, and for sure it's going to make him a better driver and a more accomplished driver, but man, it's got to be tough making that transition. One to go at the line. Chilton, and then the lapped car of Pedrahita. And then Ed Jones, R.C. Enerson. But R.C. Enerson actually has another lap car to take, uh, to, that he's got to take here, and that's Spencer Piggott. He's running fourth on the road here, but he is going to be a lap car once R.C. Anderson gets by him. So that's a big benefit for Chilton. And Jones has the benefit of Anderson with Piggott in front of him. And start to pick up speed. Pace car will pull down. Chilton is back on it. And we're green again at Iowa Speedway with 28 laps to go. And look at this, Juan Pedrojita is going to try to unlap himself. Can't quite do that, but now Ed Jones has got to be smart. Look at this, R.C. Eners again on the high side. He loves it. Harvey ducking down low, taking a look at Enerson. Harvey running in fourth position. Piggott a lap down there in the middle of all this. On board now with R.C. Enerson working on Pedrojita, who is a lap down. Let's see what he can do here. Juan Pedrojita being nice to R.C. Enerson in that Lucas oil car right now. Now R.C. Enerson's got to put his head down. But look at this, Jack Harvey wants a piece of it as well. And how devastating for Spencer Piggott seeing his championship combatants go around him to lap him. He's already seen Ed Jones do that, and now Harvey is trying to do it. Yeah, Kevin, it's just demoralizing when you see your championship rivals just drive by you as if you're standing still. Spencer probably feels like he's in a pro Mazda car right now. He is not loving this right now, so all he's got to do at this point in time is just keep it clean and make it to the finish, hoping that someone else will DNF this race. Up front, it started to settle in a little bit. Chilton is a second in front of Ed Jones. He had the cushion of the lap car on the restart. Another second and a half back is R.C. Enerson running in third. Another two seconds back to Jack Harvey. And side by side there with Felix Zorales and Scott Anderson back in the pack there. They're fighting hard as well. And we're taking off the lap so quickly here. Again, they're doing 162 mile an hour average speed around the seven eighths mile oval. I've driven at this track and it's so physically demanding because just look at how long those corners are and the G-forces reach over 3.5 Gs right in the middle of the corners. So the forces that are pushing on your head and your arms and everything in the middle of the corners is crazy. And now towards the end of this race, these drivers are tired. Well, not only is Indy Lights here at Iowa Speedway during the Indy Car Weekend, but also the second step on the Mazda Road to Indy Ladder. Pro Mazda raced here earlier today, and Katie has the winner. Kevin, I am here with Waron Tan, who won the Pro Mazda here at Iowa Speedway. And Waron, we've been sitting here watching the Indy Lights race on this screen all race long. When you look at these guys, what do, what do you learn? What do I what, sorry? What do you learn from them? Um, I mean, it's really good learning from these guys. I mean, obviously, they're a lot more experienced than us. So watching the race, you know, as, as much as I can learn from them, I just I just try to absorb. And that's about it, really. You absolutely blew everybody away today. What was so good about your car? Well, I think, I think the team did a really good job putting a good car together. I mean, 
For us to come home one two, I think we couldn't ask for more, and we're really happy about that. So, especially from a comeback, um, of what happened in practice, we did really good. You run for Andretti Autosport, who has cars in every rung of the Mazda Road to Indy. What does it mean to you to be to, with a team that seems so committed to Indy cars? What does it mean to me to move up to IndyCar? And be with a team that has uh, has cars in every level of the run. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a great opportunity for me um, to have a team, um, a Pro Mazda Indy Light and Indy Car team. It feels good because during the Indy Light and Indy Car races, we know as a Pro Mazda driver, we get to sort of be like a development driver, so we can learn as much from those guys. And it's a, it's, yeah, like I said, it's a really good opportunity for us. Shelby Blackstock is the driver for Andretti Autosport and Indy Lights, and of course they have four cars in IndyCar. Kevin? Katie, it's been very impressive what Michael Andretti and his group have done for IndyCar, not only with, with cars in IndyCar, Indy Lights, Pro Mazda, they've had USF 2000 cars before, but they're promoting races. They're doing what they can to try to grow the sports. Yeah, they really are. They've been working so hard and just putting so many cars in the Mazda Road Indy really legitimizes the whole system. So it's great to see them bring in great drivers and uh, putting a great crew together year in, year out. We'll keep an eye on this battle for fourth. Jack Harvey, the championship leader with Kyle Kaiser behind him. Up front, it's Max Chilton trying to win for the first time in America, headed to the finish from Iowa Speedway. 11 laps to go at Iowa Speedway. Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires on NBCSN with Katie Hargan and Anders Krohn. I'm Kevin Lee. Max Chilton continues to lead. He gave it up briefly mid-race to his teammate Ed Jones, but got it back as they dealt with lap traffic. Meanwhile, the championship leader Jack Harvey has been running fourth, but just slid back to fifth as Kaiser gets to the inside. Look at this, Kaiser sticks it down the inside, Harvey not giving an inch of room, oh. and there's contact, look at that, complete opposite lock there for Jack Harvey. He is lucky not to be in the wall. That is not something I would expect to see from Jack Harvey, who's fighting for the championship and needs to stay consistent. And he's got one of the guys he's fighting a lap down. He was 20 points to the good of Spencer Piggott, so he loses two points there but it could have changed oh so much if he goes into the wall. Everything could have changed there. I'm just looking at Jack Harvey's left rear tire here. He has some scuff marks, but I don't think there's mechanical damage to his car, so that is going to be his saving grace here. But let's have a look at Kyle Kaiser moving all the way up to fourth for what has arguably been the toughest weekend for Junko's racing thus far this year. Kaiser does have a podium finish this season, round number one in Toronto on the Ovals. Ninth last week in Milwaukee, but remember, he was running in the top three before his spin in that race. And then at Indianapolis on the Oval, he had a good run, finishing in fifth position. And Kaiser's another one of those young American teenagers as we see Harvey going around Piggott one more time. And Sorrell is back there. He's a lap down as well. The Kaiser has had a strong season in his first year in Indy Lights, all things considered. Yeah, exactly. But right now, just looking at Kyle Kaiser, he is on a tear right now. And I think he is catching RC Inners just a little bit, but not quite sure if he'll have enough laps to catch RC. Up front, Max Chilton has stretched his lead to 3.6 seconds. On board with R.C. Anderson, there we see Chilton again, and we will award him with the Cooper Tires Everyday Performer. What a performance it has been today for Max Chilton under very daunting circumstances with Jules Bianchi, his former Formula One teammate, succumbing to his injuries after being in a coma for nearly nine months, and the word just came down yesterday. Yeah, it's just a great loss to see Jules Bianchi go. He was a close friend of Max Chilton, and Jules Bianchi was always one of those guys when he was rising through the ranks, you knew that he was going to be a superstar. So I cannot believe how saddened I am and the entire motorsports community of his loss. But right now, Max Chilton putting on exactly what Jules Bianchi would want to see and him just out there dominating. He has said that Jules will be riding with me today, and so far it has been as good as it has been over in America for Max Chilton. No better than a third place finish this season. Ovals were gonna be the biggest challenge. He's got a chance with a few laps to go to conquer this one here at Iowa Speedway. Still some lap traffic to deal with. I think right now what Max Chilton has to do is just hang back. Do not pass Shelby Blackstock. He does not want to ruin it. He's got a big, big gap right now. So now he just needs to hang back. He's only got two laps to go. Big gap here to Ed Jones, who I think has encountered some problems because he's going really, really slowly. He's back to four seconds back as Max Chilton sees the white flag one more time around. Less than a mile at Iowa Speedway. 
now he's just got to be smart here as he turns into turn three. Avoid that inside apron right there. Let it track out nice and easy. And one more lap to go. And he will honor his teammates from Formula One, Jules Bianchi, by doing what he said he was going to try to get done today. Max Chilton has come to America. It took him maybe longer than some of us thought it would. But Max Chilton now is going to be a winner in the States and in Indy Lights. Max Chilton has won at Iowa Speedway. What a huge sigh of relief for him and Carlin. They have not only conquered Max Chilton's first win, but Carlin's first oval win, which is huge for them as a European team coming in as rookies in Indy Lights. Ed Jones comes home in second. He continued to slip. He finished six seconds back. R.C. Enerson hangs on to third. Kyle Kaiser fourth, then Jack Harvey in fifth, maintains an 18-point lead in the championship. Scott Anderson, Juan Pedrojita, Spencer Piggott, Shelby Blackstock, Felix Sorales, and Ethan Ringel round out the lineup. We will talk to what I'm sure is going to be an emotional winner coming up in just a moment. Max Chilton wins at Iowa Speedway. Back at Iowa Speedway for Indy Lights, presented by Cooper Tires, where Max Chilton has become the sixth different winner this season in Indy Lights, holding off his Carlin Racing teammate, Ed Jones, R.C. Enerson, the 18-year-old from Florida, finishes on the podium. Another American teenager, Kyle Kaiser, with a strong run, and the championship leader, Jack Harvey, finishes in fifth. It has been an emotional weekend for Max Chilton, but now he's a winner in Indy Lights, Katie. And Kevin, in the exact same day that Max Chilton scores his very first pull in the Indy Lights Series, he also finds Victor Lane for the very first time. Max, that was a great battle there with your teammate Ed Jones. What was it like battling out there with your teammate on, your, on this oval? Um, a serious experience. That was only my second oval race and I learned a hell of a lot. Um, it was nearly the perfect race. I had a little tantrum in the middle when people get in your way and they, they screw your race up, but um, Ed then had the same as me. Um, I got down the inside of him and from then on, I think that the, the safety car actually helped because it then cleared the track for me for the final 30. So I can't thank the team enough. And yet again, um, this is for you, Jules. Yeah, I was going to say, this has been a very emotional day for you as you got out of the car. I saw your team manager put a black armband on your arm. What does it mean to you to find victory lane here for Jules? A uh, huge amount. You know, I, that was a near perfect race. But I know if Jules was here, he would have probably, yeah, again, beaten me because he is perfection and he was destined for great things. So, um, yeah, you know, credit to everyone. We're new to this over here, Carlin. It's a European team. We're not used to going round and round, and uh, we've done it. Well done, Max. Kevin? And Max is somewhat low-key anyways, but you can certainly understand why that is a subdued victory lane. Here's how the championship stacks up now. Jack Harvey stretches his lead a little bit. Four more points on Spencer Piggott. He keeps stretching his lead even on a difficult day and it's just amazing how consistent he's able to be despite being thrown all these curveballs. So I think we're going to see a thriller for the final four races. 